transgenderism, men identifying as women, competing in women's sports, using women's bathrooms, trans activists influencing government, spreading violence in the streets, controversial sex education for young kids, separating children from their parents, offering sterilizing hormones, irreversible surgeries. Unthinkable a decade ago, now accepted, even applauded. All right, continuing our discussion. This is International Reporters Roundtable. Great to have you all on. Jennifer, you've said the in gender industry underlying all this action is worth $3.7 trillion, fueled by a patients for life model. That's a lot of money. Is there a corporate structure behind all this? Well, absolutely. Um, but first of all, I want to clarify that that's $3.7 trillion uh, is a marketing constituency. That's a number for the marketing constituency of the entire LGBT globally. Um, so that means um, this this marketing constituency is a powerhouse now. That you know, if you cross market to them, or if you don't cross market to them, you're going to be um, you're going to be left out of the loop um, in terms of finance because they're so big at this point. Um, but I just wanted to, to clarify something else. Um, you know, we keep talking about transgenderism and LGBT, and I think that we need to clarify what is actually going on here. This is an industry, an industrial body dissociation. This is what's being marketed to the youth. And this is what's really important here, that, that the, the youth are being targeted with massive propaganda um, through their schools, through their media, through our media, um, everywhere they go, they're being taught that you can um, dissociate from your physical uh, sexed reality and that this is okay and that it's progressive. And governments are getting on board with this across the world. And this is happening um, in the course of evolution. It's like a nanosecond. Why is this happening? It's patently absurd to think that governments are doing this for a minuscule part of the population that have dysphoria related to their sexed reality. You know, we are not um, changing society, the way that we're organized, society is organized around sexual dimorphism because, uh, because of these people that have body dysmorphia. This narrative is completely insane and um, ridiculous. So we have to look at what is happening here. Why are they promoting body dissociation as a progressive, you know, as a progressive thing? What is this narrative? Um, and we look if we look at where we are in time, um, you know, we're coming out of the digital age and we're moving into biotechnology, you know, advancements in biotechnology, artificial intelligence, and transhumanism. Um, and so this is really, I see this as a more of a grooming process for the public um, because you can't just take people from, you know, from where we were as humans and um, sort of overtake sexual reproduction through technology, you know, without building a bridge for that. And transgenderism and gender identity is the bridge because it breaks open the market in sexual identity. Um, Sexual orientation is just sexual orientation. You're, you're, you gravitate to the same sex or the opposite sex. The problem becomes when you corporatize those identities. Now, when you want to open your markets under corporatism, you have to break this apart. And there's no other way to do that to create other sexes than to say that sexual dimorphism is not real and put uh, sex on a, on a spectrum. And this is the narrative that's being driven with powerful, powerful, by powerful people with lots and lots of money by funding institutions. There's different um, arms in, to deal with the different uh, aspects of culture, like you have GLAAD, uh, who deals with the, um, the Hollywood and the media. So they go in there and they tell them what to say about this progressive group, right? This right. new addition to the LGB, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes, it does uh, look very broad when you take this uh, take a step back. The